uh, children of Israel fleeing from the sun today. That's good. We probably picked the hottest day of the year to come out here, but it's a beautiful place, and we, um, we prefer this over snow, ice, and rain. So as the sun moves, the shade will also move. Please feel free to move with it. You don't have to stay where you are. Um, as we begin, I encourage you to take note of the announcements that are in your bulletin. Courtney's going to go over a few of them. Good morning. Wait, is this on? Okay. No. Can y'all hear me? Yeah. Okay. Um, I wanted to mention that this Thursday is construction, and this is our first year uh, participating in construction. Uh, there's a picture in your bulletin of our structure. It's going to be um, a sculpture of our carillon and sanctuary. And uh, one of the awards that, uh, that we can get is the People's Choice Award. So on either Tuesday or Wednesday, there will be a link coming out from RIFA, and then we will send it to all of you through our, our regular e-news. Uh, you can go on that link and vote for People's Choice. Uh, one dollar gets you ten votes, and you know we're going to have the best one, so you got to vote on us, right? Um, so please be on the lookout for that Tuesday or Wednesday. Uh, you can also go in person down to the Civic Center and, and see all the sculptures and vote with a QR code there, or they'll have places to take up money. So lots of ways that, that you can vote for us. I also wanted to mention that um, on Wednesday, October 2nd, our Awana uh, group, that is our, our children's Wednesday night program, are going to be doing a program called uh, Around the World, where we'll, we will be celebrating um, the worldwide church uh, right there before World Communion Sunday. And there is a sign-up sheet in our fellowship hall. We're looking for people to bring uh, uh, dishes from around the world that we can share that evening. So. Uh, also, be sure to do that. Thanks. So please take note of the announcements in your bulletin. There are lots of ways to get involved here at First Perez. Uh, if you're looking for a church home, we'd love to have you here, and I'd be glad to speak with you after the service today. I do want to po point out one special guest before we get started. Preston Sheely is here today. Stand up, Preston. Everybody clap for him. Preston was a seminary classmate of mine. I hadn't seen him in probably 40 years, but um, he just showed up out of the blue today. So he's one of, the, one of the few who managed to stay in pastoral ministry throughout his career. Isn't that right? And your lovely wife is here as well. We're glad that you all are here and we welcome you um, in the name of Jesus Christ. Let us worship God together.
One thing I did forget to say about Preston is that he is a huge Clemson fan. Uh, you got one who joins you. We have a different shade of orange around here, but we welcome you as well. Let us join together in the uh, call to worship. Please stand in body or spirit. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. In the empty chaos and crushing darkness, God spoke light and order into being. Creator God, bring light into our darkness and order into our chaos. In steadfast love and faithfulness, God has done marvelous things. In the beginning, God took land and sea and filled them with life of every kind. Creator God, help us find a place of service and witness within your diverse creation. In the beginning, God spoke his image and likeness, and the returning echo formed humanity. In the beginning, God created and it was good. Let us worship our creator God. ourselves and the truth is not in us but if we confess our sins then God who is loving and merciful will forgive us and cleanse us of all unrighteousness so confident of God's love and mercy let us confess our sins in our responsive prayer of confession 
gracious God of creation. We give you thanks for the beauty of earth and sky and sea, for the awesome splendor of mountains, for the fruitful plains and flowing rivers. We give you thanks for the songs of the birds, the beauty of the flowers, the abundance of wildlife. We give you thanks. Forgive us, O God, when we take your creation for granted. Forgive us when we are unwise or selfish in our use of natural resources. Forgive us when we fail to be good stewards of the blessings of this earth. Give us the desire to care for one another and for all the earth, for all these things are part of your good creation. Through Christ we pray. Amen. And now let us take a few moments for our own silent prayers of confession and repentance. Amen. I invite you to stand now as you are able, in body or spirit, and join me in the assurance of forgiveness. The Lord is compassionate and merciful, very patient, and full of faithful love. As high as heaven is above the earth, that's how large God's faithful love is for God's children. As far as east is from west, that's how far God has removed our sin from us. In Jesus Christ, we are all forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. Sisters and brothers, let us greet one another in the peace of Jesus Christ. The peace of Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. Let's pass the peace. to invite our children to come forward with time with the children with Miss Callie. That was our chance. <laughs>
boys and girls, I'm going to have to stand up here, okay? Can y'all turn this way? It's not a good position on these steps, I know. <laughs> You're bailing. You're bailing. <laughs> All right. Maybe I'll catch the sun. Good morning, everybody. How are y'all today? Good. Um, I forgot my paper this morning, and I've got my my lesson on my phone, and that's throwing me off a little bit, but we're going to make it, okay? So I have a question for y'all. How did you get here this morning? How did you guys get to church? In a car? How did you get to church? Super force? Oh, man. So I have another question. Did anybody drive their car to church? Did you do it? You drove. No. Did you drive to church? Yeah? So you guys had a mommy or a daddy or maybe a grandparent to drive you to church this morning? Okay, so if you can't drive, how do you get to work in the morning? Yeah? Does anybody here work in the morning? No? What? So you, so you can't drive and, and you also don't have a job? So if you can't drive and you don't have a job, how do you get food to eat? Your parents pay for it. How do you get food to eat? They drive to McDonald's. Oh, I'm going with your parents. So you guys are telling me that other people just drive you places. Other people just give you food. They just do that for you? That's really nice, isn't it? That is nice. So I'm asking you these silly questions, guys, because I want, today's scripture is about asking for help, okay? And we always need to remember that we need other people's help. So in today's scripture, Jesus' disciples forgot that they needed help, okay? And we know this because they're arguing. And you know what they're arguing about? Who's the greatest and who's the best? So they're thinking, no, I'm the best. No, I'm the greatest. And when, yeah. And so when you're thinking about who's the best and who's the greatest, you're only thinking about yourself, right? Because if you think that, that you're the best, then you think you can do it better than anybody else, and nobody else is better than you. So that is why Jesus had to remind his disciples that being the best and being the greatest does not welcome God into your life. So Jesus told his disciples, stop being a know-it-all. You don't know it all, and instead... You need to remember that you could use some help from time to time. Etta, did you hear that? Okay, we're in our all out, I can do it by myself phase, and it adds about 10 minutes to everything we do. So, accepting help, guys, it's not always easy, and it's hard to remember, and it's something we need to practice, but you can, you can, but when we know that we need God's help, then we're better at accepting help from God, okay? And then, when we accept help from God, our best is even better. All right? Okay. You ready to pray? I want you guys to repeat after me. Ready? Dear God, thank you for Jesus, who teaches and shows us how to do our best by asking for and accepting your help. Thank you, and amen. All right, good job, guys. Thank you. You guys coming to Children's Church? Come on. You blew up a little. That's awesome. Just a little bit of growing. Uh, uh, okay, folks, I know you thought you were about to get out of the old rugged cross, but you're not. We're going to sing one verse of it. So let's go with one verse. Please stand if you are able.
to God in prayer, there are a few things I'd like to mention. Uh, we want to remember Jeff Cole, who is Courtney Hiscock's father. He is recovering uh, from surgery. We want to remember Stacy McAdams as she recovers from surgery. George and Patty Smith, uh, Kate Watson, Sid Conger, who I believe has gone home now uh, from the hospital or in rehab center. Nora Alexander, for those of you who are not aware, Nora had a fall and broke her uh, humerus. Um, that's in your upper arm, right? This is the ulna and the radius. Now, again, I have to hold her. For all two weeks. She broke her humerus and she said it wasn't. Uh, Jerry, there you go, you got that one. Jerry Callis, uh, as he recovers from a stroke, and I understand there was a shooting, in a mass shooting in Birmingham last night. Uh, four killed and 18 wounded. So we want to keep the community in Birmingham in our prayers. That was um, Courtney and Lane's old neighborhood, she says. Um, so we want to keep them, their friends, um, all who live in that area in our prayers, as well as our nation, as we try to decide how we can cope with these horrible shootings. Are there other folks to mention or other situations today? Yes, ma'am. You say your mom broke her hip? Okay, Gabby's mom. She's okay. Anybody else? All right, let's turn to God in prayer. Gracious God, as we gather in the beauty of this outside space, we give thanks for your creation, for the love with which you tend it, and the responsibilities that you give us in that manner. We thank you for each other, for this part of the body of Christ, and we pray that you would continue to bless us as we reach out to this community through organizations like ARM and RIFA. And we thank you, O oh God, for the worldwide body of Christ. All around the world, people gather to worship you, O oh God. Some 10,000 years after his life and death on a cross, the mission of Jesus Christ is still being accomplished all around the world every day. And yet, there are so many difficulties which we face. We pray that you would enable us to be true ministers, each one of us, as we minister to the world around us. We remember that we're called to do unto others as we would have them do unto us, and to love our neighbors. And we know that includes everybody. But sometimes it is so hard, oh God. It is difficult for us to love people who are different, who have different opinions, who live in different places and ways. Open our eyes to the beauty of your people, O oh God, as well as the beauty of this creation. And enable us to see that your presence and grace and love are being made manifest in each person in some way. Help us truly to love one another. We make this prayer in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now, if Diane Sklinski would please come forward. We have a minute for mission concerning the beauty of God's creation. So clearly I should have worn my sunglasses to come up here, but I didn't want to look quite that cool. So this is a minute for mission that combines the ideas of both stewardship and earth care, because stewardship is the reason that we are an earth care congregation. We often think of stewardship with respect to our church in terms of keeping the finances in order, 
maintaining the property, things of that nature. But a steward is a person with management responsibility who does not own the thing that they are taking care of. And that's our relationship with the church, but that's also our relationship with the whole earth. We each make decisions every day as to what we're going to purchase, what we're going to use, how we're going to dispose of things. That's a management responsibility that each one of us has. And this planet needs us to make those choices in a responsible way. And that's why we are an earth care congregation. It's part of the Presbyterian food program because our decisions affect the abilities earth to support us and all people. So I ask you to prayerfully consider each of your decisions as you make them. And I know that, you know, we have to make a lot of decisions in short periods of time. Um, but, you know, be thinking prayerfully about your choices as you think about your role as a consumer and as a member of the church. Thank you. Thank you, Diane. We're truly blessed with the facility that we have here. Um, for those of you who may be visiting, you're sitting in an arboretum, which is a collection of trees that are native to the area. And those trees have been identified and cataloged and we are a class one, I think, arboretum in the state of Tennessee. And so we are uh, thankful for the blessings that God has given us and aware of the responsibilities that we have in caring for those blessings. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for the beauty of your creation and the beauty of your word. As we turn to your word, we ask that you would open our minds and hearts, our lives, our ears, to your will and your direction. Through Christ we pray, amen. Okay, our Old Testament reading this morning comes from the book of 1 Samuel. Um, selected verses. Does anybody know who Absalom was? You got to know who Absalom was. Anybody know who Absalom was? David's son, that's right. Absalom was one of David's children, one of his sons. And um, Absalom was known to be the best looking guy in Israel. Seriously, it says that in the Bible. He was the most beautiful man in Israel. He was also pretty vain about his beauty and his wisdom and his love for power. And so at one point in his life, Absalom rebelled against his father and tried to overthrow King David and his kingdom. Absalom was killed in the war that followed and David was brokenhearted. The verses we hear today come from 1 Samuel 18, uh, verses, well, 31 through 33, basically. Then the Cushite arrived, that's a, a messenger arrived, and said, My Lord, King, that is David, hear the good news. The Lord has vindicated you today by delivering you from the hand of those who rose up against you. The king asked the Cushite, is the young man Absalom safe? Please notice there that David was the king of Israel. He had been involved in a civil war. The uh, portion of the, there was a portion of the people trying to overthrow him and kill him. And yet his first question was not about how the war was going. It was about his son, Absalom, who was leading the troops against him. The king asked, is the young man Absalom safe? The Cushite replied, huh, may the enemies of my Lord and King and all who rise up to harm you be like that young man. In other words, he's dead. The King was shaken. He went up to the room over the gateway of the city and wept. As he went, he said, oh, my son, my son Absalom, if only I had died instead of you, my son, my son. Oh, Absalom.
This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Our New Testament reading this morning comes from the book of Ephesians, chapter 4, verse 25, through chapter 5, verse 2. Listen once more for the word of God. So then, putting away falsehood, let all of us speak the truth to our neighbors, for we are members of one another. Be angry, but do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger. And do not make room for the devil. Thieves must give up stealing. Rather, let them labor and work honestly with their own hands, so as to have something to share with the needy. Let no evil talk come out of your mouths, but only what is useful for for building up, as there is need, so that your words may give grace to those who hear. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, with which you were marked with a seal for the day of redemption. Put away from you all bitterness and wrath and anger and wrangling and slander, together with all malice, and be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ has forgiven, has forgiven you. Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children, and live in love as Christ loved us, and gave himself up for us a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. This is the word of God for the people of God. The grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of the Lord endures forever. Thanks be to God. As we begin this morning, I want to share with you a little story about a couple of fishermen. I think one of them was named Bob Redding, and the other was named Randy Jones. And they decided they'd take a vacation together and go fishing. Well, Bob talked about a a vicious battle that he once had with a 300-pound salmon. Randy listened attentively. He frankly admitted that he had never caught anything nearly that big. However, he told about the time that his hook snagged a lantern off the bottom of the lake and the lantern had a tag on it that said it was lost in 1912 but the really weird thing said randy about this lantern is it's still lit after all these years it's still lit look at the light coming right out of that thing that's what i said to myself for a long time bob said nothing then he took a deep breath i tell you what I'll do, Randy, he said. I'll take 200 pounds off my fish if you'll take that light out of that lantern. Our adventures in the outdoors often provide us with the opportunity to tell some good stories. Every time I go to Montreat, I'm reminded of the fact that I've always loved and enjoyed being outside, especially out in the woods. I've always enjoyed being in nature. I spent every summer of my life in the woods of Montreat, in a little cabin that has been a true constant in my life. It didn't have heating or cooling, didn't have TV, didn't have radio, didn't have a washer or a dryer, didn't have a dishwasher, didn't have a disposal or a telephone, but it was in the woods, and I loved it every minute of being there. I also had a section of woods behind my house where I lived in Atlanta. There was a big gully there, and and it it was wooded with a stream running through the bottom of it. And I spent a lot of time as a child catching crawdads and salamanders in that stream. I even built a lean to fort that I promptly named the Possum Hole. And I found, believe it or not, a Civil War bullet from the Battle of Atlanta in that creek. Still today, when I like to or need to get away to a quiet place, I like to go to the mountains or the woods. That's my familiar territory. Not everyone feels that way, however. Literature often portrays the forest as a sinister place. Remember Hansel and Gretel? Remember Snow White? 
Remember Little Red Riding Hood? Scripture also speaks of danger in the woods. In the Dictionary of Biblical Imagery, we read that the woods in Scripture are held in contrast with towns and cities and organized places. The woods are totally unorganized if they are wild. The forest is seen as the home of wild animals. Wild animals do what? What do wild animals do when they get hungry and you're walking down the path? They eat you. It wasn't a compliment to think of the woods as the domain of wild animals. Many times in scripture, the woods portray an image of terror and even a picture of God's judgment in Isaiah and Hosea. And so with that thought in mind that the woods in scripture are a dangerous place, we go to today's Old Testament reading. If you read the 18th chapter of 2 Samuel, you'll see another dark example of the woods in Bible. Absalom's army cho chooses to do battle with David's army in the woods of Ephraim. In an interesting statement, verse 8 of that chapter tells us, uh, and listen to this, this is one of the most interesting uh, phrases in scripture to me. In verse 8, we're told that the woods devoured more people that day than the sword. Sounds like something out of Lord of the Rings, doesn't it? The woods devoured more people that day than the sword. And one of the people that was devoured by both the woods and the sword was David's son and the leader of the opposition army, Absalom. Caught by his long hair as he fled on his horse in a low-hanging limb of a tree, Absalom was easy pickings for the soldiers of David. And when the news of his son's death arrived, David's heart was broken. I don't know if you, or I do know, that some of you have lost children. You've lost loved ones. It's hard. It's very hard. And it's one of those things that you never get over. If you've lost a child or have come close to losing a child, you know it's a terrifying experience. David was overwhelmed. He didn't know what to do or what to say. His heart was broken. And he cried out, Absalom, Absalom, my son, my son, you are my son, Absalom. I wish I had died instead of you. The woods can be a dark place indeed. Although I personally enjoy being in the woods when I go there, I'm always well equipped. I've got water, I've got the right kind of shoes and the right kind of clothes for the season. I let people know where I'm going and that I'm going, and when I will return, and I always have a map or some sort of organization or plan for my hike. I know the structure and the organization of the land I will navigate. There's a an ordered plan in place. You see, in the woods, the real trouble starts when there is disarray, when structure vanishes and you don't know which way to go. Eons ago, a man and a woman lived in a well-ordered garden. They had all they could hope for in that garden. There was plenty of food, water, they had shelter, they had a beautiful landscape over which they had the freedom to roam. They were not threatened by any wild animals. Their life was lived in blissful peace and happiness. There was just one thing that they were asked to do by the owner of the garden, and that was to stay away from the fruit of a certain tree. Huh? Why shouldn't we eat that fruit, said the man and the woman. It looks so good, tasty and tempting, and surely the keeper of the garden will not know if we just take one and we can split it. And so they did. But the keeper of the garden did know, and despite the fact 
that the keeper was loving and gracious and merciful, the keeper of the garden was also just and righteous. And so he confronted the man and the woman and, woman and said to them, what, what is this? What have you done? Why have you disobeyed me? What have you done? My children, my children, what have you done? And although it broke his heart and his justice, the keeper of the garden sent them out from the well-ordered garden of Eden into the wild disarray of the woods. The couple walked from paradise through sinfulness into the woods and the disarray of brokenness. And another father's heart was broken. Like David, the keeper of the garden wanted no harm to come to his children. Though they had forsaken him, his love for them was still great. Even as Absalom had forsaken David, and David's love for Absalom was still great, so the keeper of the garden's love was still great for the two people he had created. They had forsaken him, and his heart was broken. And you can hear the words echoing, my son Absalom, my son, would that I have died instead of you. Like David, God felt the brokenness of his children, Adam and Eve, and he wished that he could have died in their place. So he did. The keeper of the garden was guided by love. He did not seek revenge. He did not turn his back and walk away. He did not close his ears or his life to those who were part of his life. Instead, as we read in Colossians, he sought reconciliation through the cross, through death to life. How does it go? In Colossians, God sought to reconcile to himself all things, whether things on earth or things in heaven, by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. It's a powerful statement, people. A father, your father, loves you enough to go to the cross for you, to send his son to the cross for us. We are the heirs of the brokenness of that man and women, woman who were cast out of the garden and into the woods. And even today, we often find ourselves willingly stepping into the dark shadows of sin. But the good news is that we are also heirs of the reconciliation which is offered by the keeper of the garden. He calls us to accept the offer of reconciliation and to live as those who have been reconciled to him and to one another. We are our sinners, each and every one of us, and yet we are also children of a God who loves us more than you can imagine. We give thanks for that great love that surrounds us and guides us and frees us from the bondage of sin. Amen. Amen. I invite you to stand now as you are able, as we affirm our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. Let us confess what we believe. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, 
the holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. It's written in the Psalms that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and those that dwell therein. This is God's world, and all that we have comes from God. And so this morning, in joy and thanksgiving, we return a portion of what God has given us, um, entrusted to our stewardship, to be used in service to God through the church, as we now uh, receive our morning offering. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, every good gift comes from you. We give you thanks this morning for the bounty of this earth, for all the things that you have given us, for the ways that you share your love and ask us to do the same. Lord, we ask that you would take these gifts that we now offer, that you would bless them and multiply them, that they may help us to do the work that you have called us to in this world that is so desperately in need of good news. All this we pray in your holy name. Amen. Amen.
as you go out into the world to serve, go with the knowledge that you are God's children, that God loves you with a self-giving love, enough to give his only son that we might have eternal life. That's a situation that we in our lives can and need to address each and every day, claiming the one who claims us and showing his love to a world in need. And so as you go, go in peace. And may the love and the grace and the peace of God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you this day and every day. Amen. We're dismissed.